So the first thing to do, you need to put on a screwdriver right on the brake disc so that the brake disc cannot spin when you're undoing this nut. You'll need a 27 millimeter socket. Just put this somewhere where there will be no dust uh, accumulating on the bolt. So if you know me, you know I like to spray some WD-40 wherever I can. The next thing to do will be to take a number 5 hex and put it on here, then take a number 18 spanner just to unscrew this bolt. So I'm gonna be doing that right now. So I decided that the first thing I'm gonna do is just to take an 18mm socket and then try to get it loose. Okay, now it's loose. Okay, this you don't even need me to counter hold it. So I'm just gonna crack this out. So after removing that drop link, the thing that I did was to also put the bolt right here so that I don't have to go around looking for it. So I'm gonna put my WD-40 on. So this bolt joint is held in by 16 millimeter nuts. One is loose. The final one is loose. So now I can just undo them by hand, the second one by hand, okay now we're done with that. So I'm struggling with taking the ABS sensor out, no matter how much I press on this and pull on it, it doesn't want to come out so I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. So I'm just gonna leave it right here because I'm not going to be moving the wheel knuckle out, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to be removing this connector which leads onto the ABS sensor, just gonna pull up on this then release it from this thing. So the next thing that I'm going to do as well will be to remove this 10 millimeter nut then separate it from the, sh uh, the, sh the steering knuckle. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're able to see it but the sun is causing a glare so this is the 10 millimeter nut that I need to separate from the steering knuckle and then after separating it from the steering knuckle I'll need to remove this nut right here. Because you know what I like to do, let me just do it even right there. So right now I'm trying to remove the 10 millimeter nut. Okay, let me just use the 10 millimeter spanner because this is loose right now. Okay, the 10 millimeter nut is out. Now this is separated from the steering knuckle. So here's the nut. This bolt needs to come out. So this bolt right here is an 18 millimeter nut. So this screw that you need to counter hold is an M14 screw. So you'll need an M14 socket just to counter hold this and then turn this side with an 18 millimeter socket. Okay, these are out. So what I'm going to do is just to put this back on here. Also minding the direction in which it was facing. So it was facing this side, so I'm going to put it like this, wherever I'm going to put it. Another thing that I'm going to do is just to spray WD-40 on this shock so that it slides out a little bit easier if it was going to give me a hard time. Now the thing I need to do is to remove the drive shaft and secure it onto the body by something i don't even know what that something is going to be then after that i need to separate this big chunk from the drive shaft and the shock then i'm going to have to jack it up with something so that it doesn't pull these brake lines and also pull the abs sensor so the next thing to remove right now is the tie rod end so that the steering knuckle can move very freely so i'm going to remove this tie rod end so my tie rod end is holding by a 19 millimeter socket Okay, it's loose. So the tie rod is out. I didn't realize that I was not recording while I was taking it out, but yeah, the tie rod is out. So now the next thing to do will be to separate the control arm from the steering knuckle.
so because I do not have a shock spreader tool so what I ended up thinking about doing was to then put this ball joint separator tool so what I'm doing is that I'm pushing the shock right from right here inwards then pulling the steering knuckle downwards so this is going to separate the shock from the steering knuckle so that's what I ended up having to think and did so because I do not have the proper tools so this is what I resorted to and for now I think it's, it's working very well so let me just continue and try to pull the shock out Okay, so now I think the ball joint is now touching the steering angle, so right now I just have to readjust it and then make sure that I put it in the place where it's going to push the shock further. Okay, now the shock is out, so unfortunately I couldn't film the parts where I was taking out the shock absorber from the steering knuckle because one, and I'm really sorry for doing that because I'm not the person who wants to make videos and leave you confused on how I took out things out of the car. So here's how I took out the shock absorber out of the steering knuckle because the last time I was trying to use a ball joint puller and it couldn't pull the shock out completely. So what I ended up doing was to order this tool I ordered the tool on the 20th of January and even today the tool is not here yet so I got tired of waiting for the tool and decided to come up with a plan so what I did was to put this wrecker bar this wrecker bar did a really good job as you can see right here it's already damaged because I've been hitting against it and the paint fell off so I put this wrecker bar right here so when I put the wrecker bar I got it in between the knuckle and the shock absorber so when I was putting it in I was hammering right here then it spread out the steering knuckle and the steering knuckle fell off like really it fell off that's how easy it was so another thing I used was this chisel so I also hit the chisel just to get in between right here so that I can be able to get the shock loose from the steering knuckle here's the shock and it's very very dirty so this is also the same shock which came out from the factory so this shock has been here ever since the car has been made so i'm really really sorry i couldn't show how the shock was removed because i also had to go and change the shocks because they gave me the wrong shocks from the spare parts factory so that got me to cut the video put everything back together go and get the right parts come back then start the process all over again so I was a little bit uh, rushing against time so I couldn't be able to film how I took out the shock but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna take it back in which is essentially going to be the same way I took it out so I'm really sorry about that because I don't want to leave you as confused on how I did stuff so I hope the explanation helped so here's the armor that I was using and the wrecker bar that I was using as well so I also couldn't get the shock mounting bearing because they don't have them at all. I tried Runback, I tried Cresta, I tried Run Park Ridge, I tried Delaray. The only place they have it is in Benoni and it's way too far from where I stay. So unfortunately I cannot change this but I wanted to really change them but I guess I have no choice than to put this back in. So these do not affect the suspension so much but it is really a good idea to change them. So I'm using this just to compress the springs. Yeah, it is. The shock is a bit loose, so now we can go ahead and remove the shock mounting and the shock bearing. So to remove this, you will need a number seven X just to counter hold against the shock. So make sure it sits in very tightly. You don't want this stripping because if this strips, I'm not going to be able to take it out. So. Now let's get it out. So okay, let's go. I think it got loose. Okay. I can hear the demons call when they do what they do And now I feel like taking off, find a place with a view The pain is never gonna stop if it's controlling you I know the time can heal it all, I just gotta get through Okay, now the bolt is out Damn 
So what I need to do right now is just to take these and transfer them over to the new shock. Unfortunately, these are very bad and they are so dirty, but I guess there's nothing I can do because I couldn't find the ones that I was looking for. So I just have to transfer these onto the new shock. So this shock stopper right here goes inside the bearing. So you just need to make sure that you put it inside the bearing and it sits very well. So here it is. As you can see right now, it's well seated. So that goes in there. The dust boot goes around the edges of the bearing. So guys, don't think I'm so dirty. I'm not the dirty one. The dirty one is the person who was not able to get the replacement part. So this is in. So here's the new shock which surprisingly does not come with a new nut so like any other new shock the first thing you need to do is just to compress the shock maybe three times and see if it does come back up so here it is then that's it so here's the old shock and that's how far it goes back up so as you can see right now the height of the spring goes up around here so if the height of the spring goes up around here and this shock comes back up onto this level this means that this shock was no longer doing its job and the only thing doing this job was the spring which was holding the car up instead of the shock we now show that those ones are dead so what we need to do right now is just to get the spring back on so when you get the new shock inside the spring, make sure that the spring rests on this point. This is the point where the spring is supposed to go up to. Just make sure that you do it in the right way and don't just put the shock in in any way. So right now I'm just getting the dust put in and the pump stop. So the shock is in. What I need to do right now is just to tighten this up. My torque wrench is broken, but I'll write down the specification of the newton meters that you need to torque this up to. So this bolt is a 21 millimeter and you need a deep wrench or deep socket to get onto it. I think this is as tight as it can get. Now what I need to do is just to loosen the springs while making sure that the spring rests on the place which I showed you. So you have to do this in stages so that the spring doesn't come out flying and hit you in the face. Okay, the compressors are now done with their job. When you put the shock back inside the car, there's something to look at. There are two arrows. One arrow is supposed to point towards the back of the car, and the other arrow is supposed to point towards the front of the car. So this is how the orientation of the shock mounting should be. So all of them are in. So these screws are supposed to be chugged up to 50 newton meters and 90 degrees turn. And another 90 degree turn. So I'm not able to get a 90 degree turn right there. So I'm going to just bump the newton meters up to maybe 80 newton meters, which is going to make up for the 90 degree turn that I'll need to make. So now I want to get the shock inside the knuckles. But I'll be using this chisel since I couldn't get the tool that I'm so patiently waiting for. So with this, I just snag it in here. So this is in, now what I need to do is just to get the shock in here, then I'm going to spread it further when the shock is getting in. Uh, uh, I'll need you to come with a jack. Because I, know I can't see because I'll be moving this thing and it will need to go here. So I can't see where you are putting the jack. The jack needs to be underneath this thing. That's what you need to do. Underneath this thing, the brake disc. That's all. From this side, here's the brake disc. It goes round like this. Is it underneath?
uh, the thing which aligns the shock is in just right here. So what I did right now is that I took back the CV XL in. So now the XL is in. So what I want to do right now is to tighten this ball joint nuts. I'll then jack up the car from the control arm. When jacking up the car from the control arm, I'll then spread this up. So when I spread the knuckle, it will push the knuckle up against the shock and the shock will sit where it needs to be. So the hardest part is done now because now the CV XL is able to fit inside the wheel bearing. So I'll be jacking up the car from the control arm and the thing that I'm going to do after that will be to spread the knuckle. So right now what I'm going to do is just to hit the knuckle, then the shock will slide down. So let me try that. That's it. Done. Now the shock is in. That's it. But let me just show you using a screw which goes in there. So what I can show you is just to get it through so that you can see that the shock is finally in. There it is. Then comes out through here. So that's the trickiest thing to get the shock through the knuckle. With the pressure of the control arm, the shock has no choice but to go down. So now that's it. So we are done getting the shock in. So if you think the video was helpful for you, please kindly click a like and also subscribe to the channel because that helps me make more videos and know that the people that I'm making these videos for are really appreciative. So I realized that these are also damaged and I had replacements from the car which had an accident. As you can see right here, so much damage. So I'm just gonna take those ones out and put these ones in. This are still so fresh i think that's the end of the video guys so thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it please kindly hit the subscribe button like the video so until next time i'm out if you still want to watch you can go ahead and watch the video just don't want to waste your time because the most important thing that we wanted to do is now done so right now is just to get things back together like i took it out so this is in i'll just talk it up so the tie rod is back on plug in the abs sensor you are going to go in this way the ABS sensor goes in there. Get your drive shaft bolt in. So that's the end of the video, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. So until next time, I'm gonna see you then. So we out. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way.